Moo, calm down. Hey guys, this is Michaela from The Calico and the Cow. It is currently January 26th, I believe, and I am launching my website tomorrow. That's so crazy for me to say. <laughs> when you see this, the website will already be launched and you can go to it and check it out and subscribe to the email list if you want. In addition to starting the website and launching it, I am hoping to not only post weekly blog posts with recipes and fun stuff, but I'm also hoping to start posting here on YouTube more. This is a passion project that I have wanted to do for so long. It's just never felt right. I've never had the time to do it, which I know everybody is busy and nobody has the time for it. But with school, the last seven years, I've just never gotten a chance and I feel like I'm starting to finally get in a good flow with my new job um, after being here for six months finally that I can take something else on like this. It's something I've wanted to do for literal years. It just never fit right until now. You're probably wondering what this video is going to be about and it's gonna be our story, the calico and the cow. I got into homesteading, gardening, about a year and a half ago, so mid-2020, like a lot of people did. And I'm still very much in the process of learning what the heck this whole thing means for me and what I want it to be. But I figured I'd document the process so that in five years from now, I can look back and see how far I've come. Because even just looking back in the last year, I wish that I would have taken videos or more pictures of the stuff I was learning and doing. I feel like I've learned so much in just the last year and a half already. Not only do I want to be able to look back on where, like how far I've come and where I've come from and all of the stuff that I've learned, all of the things that I've grown, I want to be able to bring you guys with me on that journey, share the failures along with the wins and the harvests and all the pretty flowers and the beans and um, just all the fun projects that I'm trying out and that I want to try out. I think it would be so cool to bring you guys along with me. This video is going to be sort of my backstory and how I got to this point. Looking back, not even just the last year and a half, but looking back on my 25 years of life, I realized there's a lot of weird and crazy coincidences and events that sort of got me to this point. And I also realized I have had a lot of hobbies. <laughs> I like to be able to do everything. All right, so let's get into it. I feel like there have been a lot of avenues that led me to this point in my goals, my dreams, my skills, literally everything. There are probably five main things in life that I can look at and say, this is how you got here. The first of those things being, I grew up in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> we had, I think like 10 acres, 12 acres, most of it was wooded. And then we were really close to our little town, but we were surrounded by farms and woods. I just have, memories of us being in the woods. We were building forts and little log cabins out of the downed trees in the woods. I grew up just surrounded by nature and I am very thankful for that now that I look back on it. Don't get me wrong, I don't want to live in my hometown. I don't feel like there's anything for, the, for me there really, but looking back I very much appreciate the amount of contact I had with nature as a child and I think that's where a lot of this stems from. I fondly remember some years having a garden and getting the foam cups and starting our seeds and having the light on them, constantly checking them to see if they had popped up, which I still do that now, even after like a few hours after planting them. The difference with that was it was just a little garden and it, it was tilled, it had, it was tilled, it had all of the rows, the neat little rows and no one actually took care of it after it started growing. We would just go pick things and eat stuff out of it. I remember filling it up, filling the little bottle for the hose nozzle up with the blue miracle Grow powder and spraying it all over it. That's something <laughs> I didn't know it was bad then and I wish that we had, but 
you live and you learn. I just, I have fond memories of the garden. Even though I was just surrounded by nature as a child and like spent most of my time in the woods and we did have a garden and I, I did have fun starting our garden. I didn't really have any interest or even just like the idea that I should have interest in where my food was coming from. It didn't matter, we went to the grocery store. I could tell you by age 10, 10 different ways to make ramen. My five favorite ways to make Kraft mac and cheese. <laughs> we lived off of that kind of stuff, pizza rolls, you know, all the good stuff. That is a huge portion, I think the first portion of what started me on this route. And it was like, I lived that as a child and it didn't hit me or come full circle until a couple years ago. Also as a child, I had major skin problems. I still have them. Um, I have severe eczema and my whole body just itches all the time. I grew up taking oatmeal baths and that comes into play in one of the other parts of this. So just keep that in mind. The second part of this is I got my undergrad degree, my bachelor's of science in architecture and sustainability. You might think, well, that doesn't really tie in, but it's kind of what got me into the sustainability um, atmosphere and like actually wondering about things and curious and looking into stuff. I got a lot of introduction to sustainability concepts and what people were doing to make the world better and what people were trying. Overall, just the general importance of what sustainability and regenerative practices can do for our lives and for the planet and why it's important. I took several classes that were, that had us do projects specifically focused on food security and sustainable social systems. So like how we can benefit from helping one another and um, just food security, a broad topic. And that really opened, started to open my eyes. So because of this, I was already into like houseplants. I, as you can see, I love houseplants. I have not so many as I used to, but in my undergrad, I had probably at least 100 houseplants in my tiny little space. But because of these classes, I started to get into having a little balcony garden. My boyfriend built us little garden boxes and we'd have things in pots all over the, the porch. I'd grow herbs and some tomatoes and some green beans. I think I tried growing zucchini. I don't think any of that stuff was really too wildly successful, but it still kind of scratched that itch that I had to, to grow something. Part three of this story is my skin. We're going back to my skin. At one point in time, I will admit to being a Bath and Body Works hoarder. <laughs> It was bad. I had a lot of candles. I had all the scents of the body creams and body washes and everything that you can think of that they have, the sprays. I don't know quite what year it was. I think it was probably, it had to have been like 2017, where my eczema started getting significantly worse. And we were living with roommates at the time. So I know that part of it was contributed to the laundry soap that was being used was irritating my skin and we live in Michigan so Michigan winters always are super dry and my skin hates me during the whole six months of winter here. It just kept getting significantly worse like to the point where I, I would get eczema under my eyes and I'd have to call into work or not be able to go to class because my eyes were swollen shut because my eczema was so bad. This occurrence kind of led me to start looking into more of like what's in the products that I'm using on my skin and looking at more natural products. And fast forward a little bit, we got to essential oils, which I still absolutely love. And they made a huge difference for my skin. I got into a couple businesses because of this. I still use the products. I love the products. The business side of it, I don't think is necessarily where I wanted to land. It was a great stepping stone for me. It really got me into Instagram. And this is a big part of my story. <laughs> um, I know it sounds kind of silly because like everybody has Instagram, right? Well, it really kind of got me into an old hobby. Remember how I said I have a I've had a billion hobbies? 
Um, photography at one point was like my big thing. I love photography, I love taking photos. I just love pretty things. I'm a designer. I just like when things look pretty. These businesses with essential oils got me back into that photography habit and wanting to take pictures of things and wanting to share stuff um, with whoever wanted to see it. So that's kind of where my Instagram started and the, the natural product side of things is where the, the journey was taking me. The journey of like caring about what's going into my body and more just a more natural lifestyle in general. Number four, so this newly found wellness journey also started leading me into the direction of vegetarianism. Four years ago, my New Year's resolution was to eat half half of the time, 50% of my meals, um, which ended up being every meal that I ate on my own, where I wasn't eating dinner or whatever with my boyfriend. Every meal that I ate on my own, I wanted to become vegetarian and start cooking vegetarian meals. It was kind of a struggle at first for me because I was so used to cooking with meat. The main reason that I made the switch is not just for health reasons, more because I started feeling guilty every time I would eat a piece of meat. And I would think about what that animal looked like, I would see it looking at me, and it was just like a really bad situation for my mental health. So I decided to try it out. And six months after that, about, my boyfriend, Taylor, also decided that he was going to do it too. So we ended up switching that June, after my New Year's resolution, six months later, um, to fully vegetarian, both of us, at the same time. And we have not looked back. So it's been almost four years. It's been three and a half years for both of us. We both feel a lot better. Um, me, morally, I feel a lot better. So as my whole life, I've really loved cooking, whether it was the fun ways to make ramen and mac and cheese as a kid or making salsa homemade as a teenager, a middle schooler, um, and being so proud of it. I've just always loved cooking, loved baking, especially for other people. Vegetarianism kind of opened the door for me to really, really get into that and experiment with that more. My favorite thing to do in the whole world is recreate meals I had as a child that are so nostalgic for me, um, that I loved my grandma or my mom or my whoever in my family would make. Recreating those in like vegetarian versions where like even the people who still eat meat are like, wow, this is good. <sighs> this is where we actually get into homesteading, part five. <laughs> I told you this was a whirlwind. So in summer of 2020, I think like many of you, many people in the world during quarantine, during the whole pandemic, got really interested in gardening. At this point in time, we had no money. I had just finished my first year of grad school, half of which was online. And we were in North Carolina and had to move, pretty much panic move within like five days of realizing we had to move back to Michigan. So we packed up all our belongings, brought them to my dad's house, and then we stayed at a friend's house for the last year and a half. And that move in that summer and not really having a whole lot going on other than moving and just COVID, um, I got really into watching YouTube videos on homesteading and gardening and learning about vegetarian and vegan and plant-based homesteads, which I didn't even know was a thing. I was just watching garden videos. I stumbled across Sunshine Farm New York, Sunshine Farm NY. And wow, I think I spent most of my summer just binge watching that channel. I really love just everything about their channel, their page, um, their lifestyle. It really made an impact on me. And I think that part of the reason is because they did the videos so well. Like I said before, I'm really interested in things that are pretty and things that look nice because I'm a designer. And so I think that because they made their videos so well, I got really just like attached to their channel and really interested in it. So my whole summer was spent watching 
their videos and just like diving into this whole new world that I didn't know existed. Learning what permaculture was. I was ordering books on seed starting and permaculture and I ordered a bunch of seeds. I had no clue how to plant all of these gardening tools. We went to the store and got compost and pots and just all of this stuff because the friend where we were staying um, at his house, he had a mini garden from an ex that lived there prior. And I just kind of decided I'm gonna take this over. Like this is gonna be my garden next year by 11 foot patch. And yeah, I just decided to go all out with it. Fast forward to winter, I was struggling to finish my year, of, my last year of grad school online. And all I wanted to do was plan my garden, even though it was just this little patch, it was 150 square feet or less of garden. And all I wanted to do was go on Excel <laughs> or Google Sheets and like design my garden layout. I was just obsessed with like figuring out when I should start my seeds and like laying it all out and learning all the information about all of the seeds. Come spring, I went even further with it and I started all of the flowers and the herbs in my grow lights that I had bought and all that good stuff. I got shelves for it. It was like a whole setup. I still have it and I love it and I'm really glad that I got it. So like this isn't a one of those moments I regret at all. I ordered like 50 strawberry bushes uh, like strawberry plants, um, bare root, with no <laughs> nowhere to put them. Um, and I was like, oh, we'll figure it out. We figured it out. They're still at his house. I'm going to be moving them over to our new house in the spring. So summer last year, summer 2021, I was growing all these flowers and plants. They're all, I was getting them all in the ground. And um, I had people like giving me seedlings and stuff. Um, and I was just throwing everything in the ground wherever it fit. Things, any herb you can think of couple tomatoes, nothing really big, um, because I was just trying things out. I was just learning the principles. And I'm really thankful that I did that, because now this year I can go all out. I think it was probably June-ish when I came up with the idea of starting a blog or a website for all of this stuff that I was creating, because I was in the process of transitioning my Instagram page over to just mostly homesteading and gardening content and the cats, obviously. I, I'm i just like that kind of person where I need that design, I need the brand. Um, and I was just like lost on what I wanted that to be or what it could be. And I realized the most important thing to me in this world is, well, at, at this moment, and I hope forever, um, my kitties, which Moo is hopping up here right now. I'll show you. He's probably gonna yell. This is Moo. He is the cow. Hmm. Put him back up there. I thought it would be really cool to pay homage to them and how much I care about them and name my blog and my page moving forward the calico and the cow. So we have a little calico named Miss Peanut Butter Muffins, AKA PB. And this is Moose of John. Uh, I don't know if you can see him. Um, his name is Moo. <laughs> so we have the calico and the cow. And I didn't really know what to do with that name for a while, but I was like, I kept it in the back of my mind and I actually created an Instagram account and saved the name so that by some chance no one would steal it. So this is sort of like another Moo, get down. Nope. I had a friend, which I recently separated ways with about six months ago, where they were very interested in cooking as well and had always dreamed about having this blog and constantly asked me for advice about it and asked for help starting it. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, my cats. I'm the kind of friend where like, if you wanna do something, I'm kind of an enabler. <laughs> I will go full force with you and help you do it if you want to. But this friend never really had the full ambition to, to do it. She would try and start it and then she would just get distracted and not really care about it. 
which kind of like sucks because I was really rooting for her and it wasn't at until like this point like this past summer in June, July, August where I realized like you know, I should take all of that research that I did for her and all the work that I put in for her and apply it to myself and like do something for myself that I think that I could succeed at because I actually have the ambition and drive to do it. And I'm already kind of doing it anyway, so I might as well just make it official. So that was like the last and final part of how we got, got here. A lot of people say to start small with a couple things and I kind of did that last year. This year I decided I'm not going to be a patient person because I'm not a patient person. <laughs> And I think I have like over 160 different varieties of seeds, just seeds. Um, that doesn't include all my strawberries. It doesn't include the several blueberry, blackberry, and raspberry bushes that we have in the backyard and cat litter buckets right now. Uh, we're going all out. And I know that some things aren't going to work out, but I just have to do it. I've waited waited too long to not be able to do it and I feel like I'm just at this like culmination of all these exciting things and I'm like everything fits together like it's all working together this is where I'm supposed to be this is what I'm supposed to be doing um it's 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 right it feels right to me so that is that is my story that is our story that is how we got the calico and the cow and I can't wait to bring you guys along for the rest of the ride and share all of our harvests and successes and probably failures and just like the whole dang thing. I guess if you could comment and tell me if you wanted to see anything in particular. Um, like I said, I love cooking, baking. I try and take little snippets of stuff while I'm working on it, but I'd love to do like try and figure out how to do like a real cooking video um, for like any of the recipes that are going to be on my blog, walk you through all of the stuff that I'm growing this year, which is a lot. That would be a fun video for me to go through because I probably honestly don't remember everything that I'm growing. There's too much. I could walk through the garden layout slash succession plan and planting calendar. If you're interested, <laughs> it's a lot, but it's super detailed and super fun for like my organizational brain to like geek out about. And then other things just like seed starting, I'm going to be doing that in the next few weeks. Like like the first real stuff for our garden, I'll be starting in the next several weeks. Um, so I could film that. Really just like anything you might be interested in seeing, I would love to know so that I can kind of get more inspiration and like feel confident that like what I'm sharing is what you actually want to see. Like I said, the calico and the cow.com is officially posted and shared and it's out for the world to see and I'm very excited about it. I, I've put my heart into it. There are at this point at least three recipes posted on the blog and if you subscribe to my email list, which I don't really know what the email list will be at this point. I don't like overwhelming people with emails so I don't think it would be more than one a week if that. I kind of want to just do like a monthly email. Um, but if you do subscribe to it, you'll get, get updates at some point and um, there is actually a free recipe on there. You'll get the link sent to you if you subscribe to it. And let's not forget to subscribe on YouTube because that would be really cool and then you'll get notified when I post videos and I would very much appreciate just any support that I can get. Share this with your friends if you think they'd be interested, with your family, on Facebook on Instagram, literally anything, I would appreciate it. Send me a message on Instagram and say, hey, maybe if you have your own channel and you're into this plant-based homesteading lifestyle or gardening in general, I would be happy to also subscribe to your channel and we can support each other. I know that was a lot and I really appreciate you listening. I'm so happy to finally get this all out there and get it going and my heart is just really happy, so. I really appreciate you watching, thank you, and I will see you soon. Bye.